Hello everybody and welcome back. This is part 21 of our Trumpeter 1200 scale HMS hood build. Uh, in this part uh, I want to reinstate the Admiral's Bridge uh, which I mentioned last time I'd removed to sort out the side shields of that. So the first thing we'll do today is get over and get that sorted out and refit it. I'll also then be able to refit the rest of the bridge that I built earlier on. Uh, the compass right up to the compass platform and the air defense platform uh, that will all go back on and I'll finish the uh, tripod element of the foremast as well. Just before we do all that and get over to the bench to look at the Admiral's Bridge just a big thank you to everybody that's been contributing to the uh, comments uh, on the playlist uh, for this particular build. It's really uh, important to get some of the feedback from you all uh, and also there's some really uh, helpful comments uh, just where I've missed something or I've got something wrong and I'll always appreciate you pointing those things out to me uh, because I do want to get the build as correct as I can and an example of that is when I did the repair patch on this aft funnel uh, someone uh, mentioned in one of the posts that the photograph that I was referring to in that uh, when I was doing that change had only a single uh, exhaust pipe going down the side next to the patch and that made me just think whether I'd got this right at all and I did check it and I didn't. I put the repair patch on the aft side of the aft funnel and it was on the far side of the aft funnel but it's easy mistake to make and I think what had happened is I'd just got lulled with the Pontos instructions when I was looking at the Pontos instructions the repair patch on the fret 6 foil is on the appears to be on the aft side but it's not when you look at it the other thing that made me think as well is there's, there's another fairly famous photograph of a crew member pointing to a splinter hole on the forward starboard UP shield here. And if there was a shell burst in this sort of area that would have damaged that forward UP uh, shield, it's likely that it was that same burst that damaged the foreside of the aft funnel. So anyway, I just checked it all out and it is correct. The patch, if you're going to do it yourself, goes on the forward side, not the aft as I did it. But it's an easy uh, correction to make. I've just removed the patch from the back of the funnel and replaced it onto the fore of the funnel. So thanks ever so much for pointing that out to me. It's as though I've got hundreds of pairs of eyes uh, looking out for me when uh, I make a mistake. And it's very easy to get into your mind that a certain thing goes in a certain position or in a certain orientation and you just carry on uh, repeating that mistake in your mind. So as I say I appreciate all those sort of comments, it's helping the build uh, come along and getting it as uh, accurate as I can. So with that thanks everybody and I'm going to get over to the bench and uh, we'll get this Admiral's Bridge sorted out. Okay, so this is the uh, Admiral's Bridge which was removed. You've seen it being built earlier on in the series. I've taken off the aft part of the shield, the original Pontos uh, etched brass and the Trumpeter kit for that matter has a solid shield all the way around the back of the uh, Admiral's Bridge. My reading looking at uh, plans is that the area from this point here on either side all the way around was railed. Now what I'm doing uh, with this shield I think is probably fairly contentious. Um, I think on several photographs uh, from the latter stages of the ship's career there was what appears to be canvas screening round the side from this point round. There's also a suggestion that work was done to this bridge platform uh, either in 1940 or 41, I can't remember. Um, but I'm just not sure about that at all. 
And I think, as I've said before in this series, uh, ultimately we uh, just have to please ourselves and do what we think is the right thing to do with some of these details. And I'm going to stick to my hunch that this was still railed. Uh, but the photographs that we're seeing with the what looks to be canvas or fabric uh, over the top of the railings uh, is still correct. So I'm going to put some canvas effect around this side of the bulkhead or what would have been railing. I'll rail around the back and I'll put some, although I've used the solid shield here, I'm going to put some railing on the inside to simulate uh, the effect of railing around this side of the deck as well. So we'll see how we get on with that. So in terms of the canvas effect itself, um, you can use some lead sheet if you can get hold of it. But I'm using uh, a foil from a bottle of wine. So I'm afraid if you're going, if you're going to follow this uh, method yourselves, you're going to have to, I'm afraid, open up a nice bottle of red uh, for the foil. Modeling such a hardship sometimes. But... Uh, we suffer for our art, I suppose. And we want the height of the shield, basically, plus a little bit more. So, something like that. It doesn't have to be uh, precise. The idea here is to have um, some roughness to this. So I'll just crinkle it and distort it like that just so you get some texture into it when we put this onto the shield on the outside here uh, don't flatten it down otherwise you're going to lose all this uh, effect got that slightly uneven creased effect on the uh, foil we can adjust it a little bit uh, afterwards. Whether you can hear that, the RAF's back. The Typhoon's on patrol up from Coningsby, I should think. So I'm just going to tack that foil onto the side of this screen with a bit of uh, just with a bit of thick super glue and set the foil into the corner of the shield there and then just work round tuck it all the way to the end Just be careful, I don't want to flatten it out, otherwise we'll lose the effect. So just that subtle crease in the part there. So that's quite subtle. When I come to paint it, I'll just accentuate it a little bit more by just painting it with some a slight touch of white in my grey mix and that'll just differentiate it even more from the rest of the metal structure. So that's uh, nice and smooth at the top. So it's a pretty subtle effect. So I'll do the other side now. I've fitted the railing round the after part of the platform 
and I've continued the railing onto the inside here where we've got the uh, fabric effect on the outside. So the, the brass shield that we refitted here is acting as a support for the uh, fabric effect and the railing on the inside. As I say, we can get that painted. The other thing just to notice is that I've put some plastic strip on the inside here. And that is just to make sure that the upper bridge sits correctly in its uh, proper place. And the other thing is that it's got some very thin, flimsy wings that go back on this part here. And they were flapping around when I originally built this platform. So they're just there to provide a little bit of support. When we get the deck painted, you won't notice these. So uh, I'm pretty happy with how that's come out. I'll get it painted, as I say, and we can fit the upper part of the bridge to it and then get the whole assembly back on the model. OK, so that's painted been in and varnished in matte varnish all the way around the shield where I brush painted it. The side screens are also painted and you can see it's virtually the same. It's just a tone lighter than the grey of the rest of the ship and it might just be possible just to see the wrinkled effect on the what I'm representing as canvas. It's a bit more obvious on that side. It's just when you catch the light you can see that it's not shield material. So uh, I'm happy with that. That's ready to go back on the ship now. You remember that I've put these strips onto the Admiral's Bridge platform and that's just to locate the underside of the upper bridge parts and especially these two wings at the back uh, which are very difficult to locate without having some sort of guide for them. So uh, I'll reassemble that now. When I first did the Admiral's Bridge I actually fitted it to the ship in this condition and then tried to fit the upper bridge to it. I'm going to do it differently this time. I'm going to actually attach this upper bridge to the Admiral's Bridge platform and then put the whole assembly onto the model. I've assembled the upper part of the bridge onto the Admiral's Bridge platform now and it's ready to go back on the ship. Obviously it needed uh, all the ladderways at the back rebuilding um, but that's all done now obviously and I can now get this refitted. I think these little screens at the side have come out how I wanted them. They're just enough the texture and the colours just enough to suggest that it's a different material to the uh, splinter shields around the sides. So I'll go over to the ship, get this refitted and then we can think about building the torpedo lookout and the after parts of the tripod mast which are these parts here with the mast cap which is uh, all trumpeter parts. Okay ready to fit the upper bridge now and the only downside with fitting the Admiral's bridge platform to the upper part of the bridge itself is that there is a ladderway that goes right in the middle and drops down onto the conning tower platform here. If we built the Admiral's bridge straight onto the conning tower platform we'd be able to just fit the ladder and drop it down like we've done with all the other decks but I'm going to have to hang the ladder on the underside 
through the gangway there just before I drop the deck down and that might be a little bit tricky I'm not even sure that it's worth fitting them because it's pretty difficult to see I'll give it a go I can always pull the thing out of the way if it doesn't work right in terms of the glue I'm just going to use some thick and I'll put it on the back of the structures that we can't really see just in case we get anything running I don't want to, I don't want it to be visible on the outside and I don't want to be doing any more touch-ups in this area so these are all obscured by the deck itself uh, so you can see that that's the Admiral's uh, cabin has come away so I've attached that to the underside of the Admiral's bridge because that's quite a tricky part to get located I've just caught the railing at the back here so I just need to straighten it out a little bit. It's very difficult to put these assemblies together and not do a little bit of damage here and there and the etched railings are so fine that they uh, well they bend if you breathe on them really but with a bit of practice you can get them to go back into the shape the thing when you're trying to reshape the railing is not to overdo it you can end up just over bending it back and you then constantly backwards and forwards and you're making the situation worse they're actually, uh, if you think that they're out of shape, it's generally by a very, very small margin, so they hardly need any work to get them back. That's, uh, that's all right, I'm happy with that now. Okay, so thank goodness the bridge is on. There's all the equipment to go on top. There's a number of uh, air lookout and air defence officer uh, binocular sets to go on top. Uh, there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of signalling lamps to go on the Admiral's bridge at the back. We have the pom pom directors here to go on the bridge wings, and of course the uh, tripod mast. I'm going to do the tripod mast next because at this point here we have the torpedo lookout platform which is built from Pontos etched brass and that has to slip down over the mast just slips down and rests on that ring uh, around the mast and then the tripod legs go at the back of the torpedo lookout so something like that but uh, you wouldn't get the torpedo lookout in if we fitted the tripod legs at this stage so 
we'll get back to the bench and build that torpedo lookout and get it installed. While I'm in this area I'm going to fit the forward director which has been in storage for quite some time. I built it a long time ago now when I was doing the conning tower itself. So uh, I think it's safe enough now to fit that. I'll go into my uh, box of parts. And uh, I'll just apply a bit of super glue on the inside ring. And with this, I want to just make sure it's perfectly fore and aft. These are the parts for the torpedo lookout platform. So two for the platform itself, just a support for underside for the underside and a railing for around the back. A couple of horns, I presume they're fog horns, which mount at the front. So it's a fairly simple assembly. I'm going to solder the parts together first. Just need to be careful how we orientate these. I'll just bend these brackets down first. Because I don't want any solder to get onto them and stop me bending them. So I'll do them and get them out of the way. Just give that a bit of a clean up. And you just need to pay attention at this point because this has a tiny hole in it offset to one side. And that needs to go to port, which is this side. We're looking at this from underneath, so it goes to port. And that's to allow the gaff to fit in at the back here. So it's just a little pin on the back of the gaff and it's offset to port. So I just need to be careful with that at this stage. Just need to put the railing at the back now. I could maybe tack it with some solder right at the front. That's the platform done. I've just tested the lookout platform on the foremast and because it has these supports underneath they don't go past the moulded in ring so I'm just taking it off at the sides. It leaves the rest of the ring to support the platform but it allows these side brackets to slide down. I think we can tack that in place actually. 
So we obviously want to get it nice and square and horizontal. These are the uh, fog horns. See if we can get a better shot of those. They are actually hollowed out in the middle. two foghorns in place have come out nice. Pleased with those. I'm not sure whether to fit the ladder just at the moment. Uh, it goes through this manhole here. But what I'm concerned about is that I'm not certain how far the mast here goes down into the structure below. And I don't want to fit the ladder to find that this won't seat properly. So I think I'm going to have to fit the ladder very carefully afterwards once I've got uh, the mast into place. So the last thing I've got to do here is fit the gaff to the back of the platform. It's uh, this part here, but it's actually only one of those. There are two pieces there. There's 21A and 21B, I presume. So we just need to have a look on the Pontos instructions just to make sure that we cut this in the right place. And what I mean by that is that all the turned brass parts are shown here. It's attached to one of the Polaris bases. You can see we want the black one and the Polaris is the red part. So we have to cut it off. You've just got to be a bit careful where you cut these because they have pins on and Obviously both parts that we're after here have pins. That's the bit we don't want just now. But obviously we want to keep it safe. So it goes back in the bag. We'll just have to remember that it's 21. My bag of turned brass goes back. So this is the gaff that goes to the back. I mentioned that tiny hole. I'm going to have to open that up a little bit. It's not quite enough. It needs to be pretty secure because it's going to take some rigging at the end of the build. So uh, there's no good having it flimsy. The rigging will just pull it away. So it's got to be a good fixing. It's actually 0.2. Let's see if that's made a difference. I'm going to solder that uh, just to make absolutely sure that it holds up to the rigging.
Okay, I think that'll do. That can go on the model now. Well, once it's been painted anyway. It's a nice strong connection on that uh, gaff there. So that's the torpedo control platform. So that's dried overnight. I painted this with some etching primer last night and let it uh, dry. It's a beautiful spring day today. First warm day we've had. It's the first day that I've not had to have the heater on in the shed. And all that noise you can hear is The, uh, it's actually the US Air Force. Uh, the F-15s are out patrolling. They take it in turns with the RAF Typhoons. So uh, they are quite a bit noisier than the Typhoons, the F-15s. <laughs> racket really. I wish they'd go away. <laughs> but uh, no I suppose not. They're looking after us aren't they? So um, I can get these tripod parts painted up and this foremast and I'll go over and get that fitted. This just needs a bit of a clean up. This is the this is the central uh, top of the, tri of the tripod. So the method of assembling the tripod legs on the foremast is that they've got to be done separately. So I'm not able to build it off the ship because the legs have to pass through structures in the bridge decks because of the splay of them at the back uh, you're not going to be able to get them through the deck so it's all going to have to be painted separately and then assembled in parts on the ship so uh, I'll get over and get these primed and painted then we can hopefully get them assembled the spotting top, which is this part here, sits on top of the foremast starfish, which is an etched brass part, both in the trumpeter kit and obviously in the Pontos set as well. And that sits, that whole assembly sits on top of the foremast, this part of the foremast. Just before I put the top coat on this part of the foremast. I've worked out actually that it is possible to fit one of the two ladders without causing any difficulty to fit in the mast onto the ship. So there are two ladders actually. There's one that runs down the fore side and goes above this level here. Uh, and goes up through the foremast starfish platform. But it does protrude quite a way above this point, so I'm not going to fit that. It's going to get bent if I do that. But the one that runs on the aft side can be fitted, and that's because it goes through the manhole here in the torpedo lookout and stops here at the bottom of this patras. The part goes through the deck to about this point here so I'm okay to fit this ladder it's pretty safe to do that and doing it just gives you a better finish really it enables you to paint over any spots of glue or little marks and blend the whole part in
So whenever possible, I try and get etched parts in their positions because it just enables you to paint over the glue marks. And I think sometimes when you're trying to fit parts after painting, there's a tendency not to use enough glue because you're just worried about marring the finish. Uh, whereas you can really put the right amount on when you're doing it beforehand. Although there are attachment points in the middle part of the ladder, I'm not going to glue those. It's enough to just put some at the bottom and some at the top. So I'll just let that set up and I can go over and paint it grey with the rest of the mast. You can see the ladder coming through the manhole there. Quite a climb for someone. Imagine uh, getting your orders in the morning and you're on duty on the spotting top. You think, oh God, I've got to climb all that way up there. that's all painted up you can see it's just easier to get a neat result when uh, you paint the etch after attachment right I'm back at the ship and let's get this foremast fitted so I've just got the three components Which is the main element. I'm not going to glue this part because it's a really tight fit anyway and I just want a bit of adjustment for when I come to fit the rear tripods and if I glued that in place now I wouldn't have that adjustment so I think it's the better plan overall. There's quite a lot of alignment to get right at this point. I'm just going to drop the legs in the patrices on the back face uh, aft so you can see you just need that maneuvering room and you just need to be careful where these are going because they're going very close to some of the railings that we've fitted so we don't want to damage those and they drop through the bridge wings here. They're really tight. They're going to have to be touched up, I think. It's pretty unavoidable scratching them, but... nearly there so the foremast needs to go down quite a bit more until all three points are level Okay, I think that's done. 
Right, so that's in. And uh, it was a bit of a trial actually. What I would recommend if you're using the method that I've just used is I'd recommend that you loosened off all these pegs and loosen the peg into the top of the bridge structure here so that it moves around you've got a bit of uh, play to locate the parts you would have to glue it then there's no glue on that at all except for where the tripod legs meet the admiral's bridge down at the bottom but the rest is just held in by uh, friction it's just such a tight fit uh, but the downside of that is that I had to use quite a bit of force to get the structure to sit properly. The uh, last thing I want to do this week is to fit the searchlight platforms which I made earlier on. They're all painted ready to go and I can also put in the uh, AFDF office in between the funnels here. Another part that I left off because of the fear of damaging it. So uh, we'll get those done and then we can wrap up for this particular video. I'll uh, fit the MFD office now. You can see why I haven't fitted it before now. Those aerial spreaders are guaranteed to, or would have been guaranteed, to get broken if I'd have... Uh, put them on earlier. Now I've got the cover I'm happier about fitting it. Sorry about the fun noise in the background it's the extractor hood for the spray booth but uh, I just need to clear the air at the minute. Okay so that's in. Next I'm going to fit the searchlight platforms which are these. There's one that goes beside the aft funnel and another one that goes next to the after defence position. So this is the after defence position searchlight platform it's the lower one there's one further up here the last thing that I want to do in this session is to fit these parts which are covers that go here just on the pom-pom station. So the purpose of these hatches were to cover up uh, tubes and they were emergency signalling tubes so in the event that uh, the signals crew on the bridge or on the after defence position were injured or killed there was an auxiliary signals position on the decks below and obviously the signals would be run up uh, through these hatches through these tubes hatches and to the uh, yards above so it's uh, interesting to know. I I, uh, I didn't really realise what they were, but they're obviously quite a prominent feature uh, on this part of the ship. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I've done what I wanted to do for this part of the build in this video. So I'm going to leave it at that for this week. Um, the fitting of the bridge, or the upper part of the bridge, is another big step taken, I think and the fitting of the tripod mast uh, turned out to be quite a bit more difficult than I expected. 
not because it's a complicated thing, uh, but because there's lots of parts to line up and get through different structures. So the rear legs pass through uh, the bridge wing at the back here and have to fit alongside some of the shields on the upper parts of the bridge. So to try and get them all lined up is uh, quite difficult. But it's on now and I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. I keep on telling myself that I've uh, done the hardest part of the build and then next time I come to something it turns out to be equally as difficult. I suspect we'll be having that sort of issue all the way through till uh, we've actually finished it. But apart from the armament, the main 15 inch armament, and the spotting top which sits on top here, there are no other uh, major structures to build. What we need to do from now on is all detail work. So we're nearly at the point where the ship will look substantially like it will when it's finished. So um, I'm pretty pleased with the progress so far. In the next part I'll carry on with that detailing and fit the hatches around the after funnel base. So there's several hatches to go down around there. And I'll finish the reels and winches that also fit around this area. So a bit more detailing to do next time. So hopefully by the end of the next video I will have finished all the detailing on the shelter deck itself uh, apart from the armament and I've got some plans for the four inch armament that I just need to think through a little bit before I make a decision on them. Uh, but I want to get the rest of the shelter deck finished and out of the way and fit the uh, detail equipment for the bridge. So that will be enough to keep me occupied for the next week and I'll post that progress in the next part on Friday next. So that's it for part 21. I hope for those of you that are building your own model of the hood uh, you've found something useful and I hope you all have a great week next week. As someone said to me in the live feed last week, uh, test negative and stay positive everybody. Stay safe and I'll see you in a week's time. Bye for now.